Hi. So um, I'm Ken. So today I'll be sharing with you um, what I've learned uh, after coming from a React developer over to a React native development. Um, so I first started out as a React developer uh, about like two, three years back. So after like coming to uh, after graduating, I started to work on React Native. So here are my comments. So um, firstly, to start off, uh, a preliminary. So React Native isn't React, but fret not, we still pray to the same God, uh, Dan Abramov. So um, for React Native, there is an engine that converts uh, Iron components uh, over to the native component. So for instance, an image, uh, an image component in Iron will be converted over to image view uh, on Android and uh, UI image view on iOS. So next is, is about the UI. So as the view is not rendered on a browser, uh, React Native need to manage the layouts in a different manner. So RN adopted Yoga. So it is an open source uh, engine developed by Facebook. Uh, it helps to calculate where to place the visual elements in terms of X and Y. So, uh, so this engine picks up uh, from the concept of flex Flexbox. So because RN isn't HTML, we don't have HTML table support, so something really weird. So uh, and neither did Yoga Engine support table, so we can't actually achieve responsive rows and columns uh, through Flex. So what we have are pseudo tables where the rows and columns resize independently of each other, which is not a table. So next is, um, if you just uh, start using RN, uh, it has a lot of things that would be quite counterintuitive. So uh, if you come directly from um, React and then move over to React Native, you'll realize that like, where all these simple things are not available. So yeah, so the examples, like the more common ones are uh, CSS stuff, uh, SVG, uh, linear gradients. So fortunately, it's open source, and uh, somebody had the solution for it. So you can add them in. So next is uh, a huge pain point for React Native. So if any of you guys are React Native developers, uh, you'll share this pain. So for both platforms, they have their own design language. So this means that they also have their own definition of how a shadow should mean and look like. So on iOS, you have your regular drop shadows. But on Android, you have def and z index relation shadows. So this means that if you were to use Android shadows, in the default way, your elements with a thicker uh, and longer shadows will be placed further up in, uh, in terms of Z index uh, in the view. So try having uh, models that doesn't have a shadow while having a view element behind that has a shadow. Like you realize that how come uh, on Android, your model is not the, the first element that uh, the user sees. So, as we know earlier, React Native runs uh, within the app on the phone itself. So its life cycle is somewhat tied to the app. So on browsers, users will be given your current React bundle uh, if they visit a website, assuming that you did your cache correctly. Um, but on RN, the users can choose not to update their app. So this means that they cannot get the latest update. So maybe I lied a little bit. Uh, so some of you guys may know that RN can update uh, on the fly. So one example is uh, Microsoft Code Push. So there's a caveat. So the idea of updating on the fly may sound enticing. Uh, unfortunately, the app can only update non-native code. Um, so this means that if you're updating code that isn't on JavaScript, you can't update it. So for instance, your Iron Engine, it's not a JavaScript. So if you want to upgrade your uh, engine, um, but the new RM version might not be a compatible change. Uh, this means that if you were to use shiny new features like concurrent mode, uh, that will not be supported by users who didn't update their device app. So your stakeholders, uh, the person who's paying you money, uh, might not have, uh, might have to stop you from using concurrent mode. So maybe some in the future, we might have polyfills. I don't know. So next is the RN and app interface. So also known as the JS bridge. So with regards to API, uh, data is fetched from a JavaScript site, but it doesn't immediately land on the JavaScript land. 
So the data first has to reach the app and then transfer it uh, over the bridge over to your JavaScript site. So this means that you have a super speedy network. The app may take tens of seconds to pass through the bridge to reach your JavaScript land. So next is async events. So when we declare a component to be created, um, we send the information through the, the same bridge as well. So the RNA engine on the app would then create uh, or process the data and then uh, have it on the native side. So this includes the creation of views or handling of events. So from here on, it becomes a little bit complicated, but it still behaves the same way as read on the browser. So events are received on the app side, then emitted to the JS side. So for instance, your finger touch and scrolls down on the screen to reach, uh, it reaches the app side first. Then depending on the event, it gets sent over to the JavaScript side through the bridge. So there are events which doesn't need to be processed by the JavaScript side. So for instance, scrolling up and down a list. Because uh, on the JavaScript side, you have already declared that you have a 10, uh, 10 iPhone list and it goes on. So the native knows that um, you want to see certain things. Uh, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't require a JS input. So you scroll and the app uh, receives a scroll and then it might send over the scrolls to, it will send the scroll over to the JavaScript site, but you might not need to act on it. So that response handled by the app uh, native list, so the scrolling event, um, you can also add a listener to it if you want. So however, if you have an event that does not have any response, uh, that responds to a native handle, uh, for instance, showing an alert after the user clicks, uh, the user will notice a delay in their action. So the JavaScript site receives it, and then it sends back to the app site to show that alert. Right? So this part is still consistent with React. Right? But for React Native, we have a bridge, as in one single bridge. So if you recall the previous point I have um, about data, um, you see something. So what happens if you have a huge amount of data coming in from uh, the API? And then the user press. And then the JavaScript site receives, but you still get more data. OK, we're still getting data. We'll get that somewhere. Ah, yeah, finally. So it, it gets some reading room. And then after that, uh, the, job, uh, the app site would then respond to it. So that's all I have.